Hey everybody, welcome to the video. So I'm breaking down the Thursday Night Football Showdown slate between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cincinnati Bengals in the game that features a 45 and a half point over under with the Bengals being 7.5 point favorites at home. While this game doesn't really profile well from a real life perspective, I think from a fantasy football or just DFS point of view, it's actually not that bad of a game because we have some exciting players to talk about on both sides here. Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, James Robinson, Joe Mixon, you have Marvin Jones, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd. And with T. Higgins being out, it does present us some value on this slate to be able to make some really fun lineups if you happen to go that route. And if you do find this video helpful in any way possible, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. I'll be here all season long talking pick strategy lineups amongst other things. I think that sounds good. And you want to hang out for the rest of the year, you might as well subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out whenever I post new content. If you want to take that one step further, become an official member over on Patreon. Link is down below in the description for that. You get access to a lot of extra content, including the spreadsheet that I show you guys each and every single week for every showdown and main slate. Projections, ownership, optimizer, cheat sheets, Discord community, all that fun stuff. Link is down below. Although if you do want to sign up, make sure you wait till tomorrow because I don't want you guys to get double charged on the end of the month. So wait until the first. And last but not least, this video is sponsored by Prize Picks. I'm sure most of you know what it is by now, but if you don't, it's Daily Fantasy Sports Simplified. Just you versus the projections. There's no sharks, 150 max contests or salary cap restrictions or anything like that. Just you versus the props they offer each and every single day. And as of right now, if you're new signing over on Prize Picks, you get a free money bonus. Listen, it's the positive match up to a hundred dollars when you use code C Pen and tell them I sent you. I think that'll be it for the plugs for the most part. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as always, we'll start with the quarterback position. We'll start up top with Joe Burrow, eleven thousand six hundred bucks. And he honestly feels a bit expensive in my opinion. It's not like he's been laying the world on fire so far this year, only averaging twenty-four passing attempts per game with two hundred thirteen passing yards. And he offers you no rushing upside whatsoever. I believe his prop on Price Picks last week was over under three rushing yards. So that just goes to show you the lack of rushing upside we have for Joe Burrow. But we have to have some interest here. They do have a 26.5 implied team total. I just don't like it being $1,200 more expensive than Trevor Lawrence because I know Trevor Lawrence has been terrible this year. But I mean, it just feels like a big price discrepancy, which I don't feel like their projections are too far off. I mean, my projections on them are both pretty similar. And Trevor Lawrence should be in a positive game script or throwing the ball, which I know he's been terrible so far this year. And I don't think I admire being his coach is helping things out too much. It's been a pretty terrible situation so far. But I mean, Joe Burrow, we got to have interest here in the quarterbacks. It's a showdown slate, so they offer you the high scores. And I think in cash games, you're probably going to want to try to get both these guys in the flex spot. At the very least, try to get Joe Burrow in. I do find myself more so captaining running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends in the captain spot. Like, you can captain Joe Burrow in some lineups. You're building multiple lineups. But we only see a captain quarterback optimal around 5 to 10% of the time. Those chances can go up when it's a rushing quarterback like Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, but Joe Burrow does not run the football. But this is a great matchup versus Jacksonville. They're 30th DVA versus the pass so far this season and 23rd versus quarterbacks allowing over 300 passing yards per game and 23.5 DraftKings points per game to the position. So Joe Burrow, while he hasn't been amazing this year, he does correlate well with the pass catching options, which I do like from Cincinnati. So I will have plenty of interest in Joe Burrow, despite him being quite expensive. And as far as Trevor Lawrence goes, I know it's been pretty poor so far this season. He's averaging nearly two and a half picks per game, seven interceptions through three games. And he only has a 19 implied team total here. But he's a seven and a half point dog in the road. So the game script wise, does profile pretty well. He probably throw the ball nearly 40 times in this game. He's averaging close to 40 passing attempts per game through three weeks. And this team is being forced to play quite quickly, averaging a play nearly every 23 seconds. Meanwhile, the Bengals playing pretty slow at 30 seconds per play. So I think just pace of play and projected volume and passing attempts for Trevor Lawrence is going to make him a viable DFS play. He's only averaging 5.7 yards per attempt, but they're going to throw the ball to keep up. I know the Bengals defense has been pretty solid so far this year, 8 DVA versus the pass and 11 versus quarterbacks, but I mean, it's a showdown slate. We got to have interesting quarterbacks. I think Trevor Lawrence, if you're building cash games, just playing both these quarterbacks is probably a very solid way to go because I do like their pass catching options. And Lawrence does come in $1,200 cheaper. I don't have him projected quite as high as Joe Burrow, but it's only a couple points off. And once you factor in the price tags, I mean, they're both kind of project similarly when it comes to point per dollar. So I'm probably just going to throw both these guys in the shell build that we're going to do on this video. So like I said, moving on to our lineup, you could captain these guys in some lineups, but if you're voting like a single entry build, I'm probably not going to go the captain quarterback route. I just feel like getting a guy like Joe Mixon or Jamar Chase or Tyler Boyd is probably the best way to go, or you get a little bit lower owned and go with one of the Jacksonville players. But just as for right now, we'll plug in Joe Burrow, we'll plug in Trevor Lawrence, and we'll move on with the rest of our lab. He's at $7,000 left per player, which there's some value on this slate to be able to make that work. And moving on to the running back position, we'll start with the Cincinnati Bengals group here, which consists of Joe Mixon, Chris Evans, and Samaji Pirine. Looking at snap counts from last week, Joe Mixon around 75% of the snaps, Samaji Pirine around 20, and then Chris Evans around 10%. So Joe Mixon, obviously the guy we want here. I don't really have interest in rostering you know, the running back from Cincinnati. He's the bell cut running back. It's a ton of volume, so the most in the entire league. He's using the passing game a little bit, but this game does profile pretty well from Joe Mixon's point of view. He's a 7.5 point favorite at home, 26.5 implied team total. 
facing a pretty poor Jacksonville rush defense, who currently only giving up the six most points to the position, nearly 30 points per game, close to 100 rushing yards, and 43 and five catches through the air. So Joe Mixon, I know he's very expensive at $11,000, but personally, he's my favorite play in the entire slate here. He's averaging 22 rushing attempts per game right now with close to 100 rushing yards and two and a half targets per game, which I know is not a lot, but at least helps boost his score a little bit. But I can't really see Jacksonville slowing down Joe Mixon here. I just think the game script profile is pretty well for him. So as of right now, he's my favorite way to go at captain, although I don't think he's the only way to go to captain. But I think for this bill, we're going to try to make it work and we'll see what happens. But I definitely like Joe Mixon today. Moving on to Jacksonville, it's pretty much a two-man show with James Robinson and Carlos Hyde. We typically see Robinson anywhere from like 55 to 70% of the snaps, Carlos Hyde somewhere in the 30s. I will say I hate the price tag on James Robinson. He's the better run back of the two, but I'm not sure he should be nearly $8,000 more expensive than Carlos Hyde. Like, if you look at their volume in the season, yes, James Robinson's the one that's involved in the passing game, around five targets per game this year compared to Carlos Hyde at 1.3, with them being seven and a half point dogs on the road. I'm not sure we're going to see a ton of Carlos Hyde action, but he's averaging over six rushing attempts per game. Per James Robinson at 10.3, and they're both averaging around five yards per carry. So yes, I know there's no receiving upside with Carlos Hyde, but at 1,800 bucks, I feel like he's the better play over James Robinson just for a value perspective. Because if I'm already playing both quarterbacks, I want Joe Mixon in my lap, I want Jamar Chase, I want Tyler Boyd. How in the world are we going to be able to fit in James Robinson? So I can't really see myself using too much Robinson here, but Carlos Hyde just from a value perspective. I could see him cracking a few lineups just to make some things work up top. I do want to mention the Bengals have been pretty stiff versus running backs this year. Not in the fantasy points department. They are 20th versus running backs. But they are second DBA versus the run right now. And I don't really think Jackson was going to be able to run the ball too much here. So not super interested in the running backs. Although I will play Carlos Hyde just if I need to find some value on this slate. Then moving on to the wide receivers, which I think is pretty fun to talk about in this slate because there's lots of good options. But we'll start with the Cincinnati Bengals group, which consists of Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, typically T. Higgins. But we know he's out for this game, which has presented some value for the Bengals and their wide receiver group, which includes guys like Mike Thomas and Auden Tate, who are both below $1,000. $600 for Mike Thomas, $400 for Auden Tate. We know these guys, for a fact, are going to be on the field. Because in T. Higgins' absence last week, we saw Auden Tate play close to 60% of the snaps, Mike Thomas around 20% of the snaps. They didn't get too much in the volume department, but they're going to be in the field. And at those price tags, they can afford us some studs on the slate. And if they happen to get a catch or two, there going to be some pretty darn good value plays at $400 and $600. But anyway, we'll start top here with Jamar Chase, $10,200. The only thing I don't like about him this week is his price tag. This is a very steep price tag for a guy that's averaging just over five targets per game. And he's also averaging 1.3 touchdowns per game so far through three weeks, which I don't think is going to keep up. Like, I think Jamar Chase is a fantastic wide receiver. He's going to be starting in the NFL. It's just he's not going to survive crushing it each and every single week on 3.6 catches per game on 5.3 targets with over a touchdown. I just feel like regression is going to hit at some point here. Not to say he's going to be bad. It's just I don't think he's going to keep putting up these kind of numbers as we see that volume rise, which it can certainly happen without T. Higgins. And he's killing in the air yards department this season. A 44% market share of the team's air yards and at the 22% target share. And plus, this is a great matchup versus Jacksonville. They're 25th versus wide receivers, laying over 200 receiving yards per game, just specifically to the position in their 30th DVA versus the pass. Also, Jamar Chase is averaging 2.75 yards per route ran with 0.71 fantasy points per route as well. So... The regression is probably coming here with the lack of volume, but I think he's a better tournament play than he is cash play in this league because I'd much rather play Tyler Boyd in cash games. He's only $7,400. So the volume's a little bit safer here, averaging over six targets per game, 26% target share. No T. Higgins obviously helps as well. No T. Higgins obviously helps as well. He gets the same plus matchup that Jamar Chase has. He's more of a possession wide receiver, only 6.8 A dot compared to Jamar Chase's 16.5. So I think he's the safer option here. And I could see him being a pretty popular captain play just because his price tag is pretty low in my opinion, especially with T. Higgins being out. So I think Boyd definitely in a very good spot here. Then if you're looking for the value plays, we have Mike Thomas and Auden Tate. Their numbers on the season obviously aren't great. Thomas is averaging 1.3 targets per game. Auden Tate 0.3 targets, 5% target share with the 1% target share. Well, you got to keep in mind though, no T. Higgins definitely boosts these guys up a little bit. And they're both pretty good value plays according to my projection. Now, keep in mind, I only have them for like three to five points, which is not amazing. But at those price tags, it's going to start jamming them in some lines to make some things work. So if you want to take your pick between the two, I don't mind that. Auden Tate did play a lot more snaps. Mike Thomas only 20% of the snaps. But then moving to the Jacksonville side here, we pretty much have a three-man show. No one else really sees significant snaps. We have Marvin Jones, DJ Shark, and LaVisca Chenault. Jamal Agnew is a returner, so you could get double dip points if you happen to go to the Jacksonville Jaguars defense paired with Jamal Agnew. Although that's not something I really want to bank on on this slate. Plus, I don't really like the Jags will... Plus, I don't really want to rush the Jags defense anyway because I have a full-on Bengals onslaught, so it doesn't really make sense correlation-wise. But anyway, we'll start with target distribution here because all these guys pretty much played the majority of these snaps. Marvin Jones leading the team in target share at 24.5%, DJ Chart at 19.3%, and LaVisca Chanel at 17.5%. If we're looking at their A dots this year, 
Marvin Jones, 12.1. DJ Shark, 16.3. He's been more than down the field guy. 32% market share of the team's air yards. Actually outpacing Marvin Jones currently at 30%. Then Leviska Chanel, he is the possession wide receiver here. Only an 8.3% market share of the team's air yards with an 8 out of 4.6. He's also the cheapest option here. So if you're looking for the possession wide receiver, Leviska Chanel should get targets. I mean, he's averaging 6.6 .6 targets per game this year. DJ Shark at 6.3. And Marvin Jones at 9. Obviously, Marvin Jones is the preferred option here. He grades out the best in projections. And while the Bengals have been pretty solid versus the pass this year, 8th DVOA, they are 21st versus wide receivers, laying over 40 DraftKings points per game. Plus, I'm expecting the Jaguars to be in a positive game script in terms of throwing the ball, which does bode well for the passing game here in the wide receivers. So if you want to take your picks with these guys, I don't mind it. Marvin Jones is the preferred option. DJ Shark down the field threat. Levis Cushnall, probably your safest option in terms of just getting catches and receptions, which can pile up on a site like DraftKings that does have PPR scoring. And I feel like I'd be doing a disservice here if I didn't mention the fact that Marvin Jones is in a revenge spot here versus his old team, the Cincinnati Bengals, that helps sway anything for you guys on this slate. So moving back to our lineup, there's a couple ways we can go here. I mentioned I really like Joe Mixon in the captain spot, although with two quarterbacks here, it might get a little bit tough, so I might have to just settle with him in the flex spot. It's the way I want to go, though. So let's just play around and build with it. If we throw in Joe Mixon, that's going to leave us $300 up per player, which... It's a bit rough, but there's some value plays to make that work. We talked about some other wide receivers I like. I really like Tyler Boyd. I feel like if you don't play Tyler Boyd in cash games, you're probably doing it wrong. So we'll plug him in. That's going to leave us $2,000 up per player. Like I mentioned earlier, we do have some dirt cheap wide receivers on Cincinnati, like Auden Tate and Mike Tom, who are $600 and $400 respectively. So we just throw one of those guys in. That definitely beefs it up a little bit. That leaves you at $3,700 left for your last spot. There's definitely a couple ways we can go here. If we want to take out Tyler Boyd and Joe Mixon and swap those guys, which I said is probably another viable way to go because I really like that price point. Tyler Boyd, then you throw Joe Mixon in, which definitely frees up some salary. leaves you at $5,500 for the last spot. I don't even think you'd have to use on Tate here. You could go the Carlos Hyde route. You could throw the tight end here, CJ Uzama, or maybe even the kicker, Eric McPherson. But as for now, we'll kind of leave it be and we'll continue on. And then once we talk about tight ends, kickers, and defenses, we'll fill out the rest of this lineup. Then moving into the tight end position, not really an exciting one to talk about on this slate. We'll start with the Bengals here. We have CJ Uzama and then Drew Sample pretty much for the most part. The Jacksonville Jaguars have like six guys listed here. But the Bengals, it's pretty easy. It's CJ Uzama or Bust because I'm not playing Drew Sample. Doesn't have any targets on the season. You know, Uzama, not a lot, but one and a half targets per game. I just don't feel like we should play him, to be honest. 4000 bucks. I mean, he plays the majority of the snaps, but 8 out of 3.4. I don't really see the upside in rostering him. I'd rather just play one of his cheaper wide receivers and on Tate or Mike Thomas, to be honest. Then moving on to the Jacksonville Jaguars, Dan Arnold, we have the new addition here from the Carolina Panthers who killed off the Darnold to Arnold combination, which is kind of sad, but he's going to be the tight end one here in this offense. Urban Meyer did say he's going to play in this game. We'll have to see how much though. I don't think he's going to play like 80% of the snaps or anything, so it's definitely going to be a mixture. So it might not be worth playing him at 4,400 bucks, but he's going to be in the field. He's going to be the best pass catching option they have. Last week they had to use Jacob Hollister. It's only $1,000. He saw six targets last week, caught two of them for 15 yards. It obviously wasn't that great, but did have an 18.75 target share in that game. It's going to more than likely be a split between these guys. We also have Chris Manhurts involved, although he's not really much of a pass catcher. Even Luke Farrell at 200 bucks, He's averaging a target per game on the season, so it's going to be a bit of a mess here. Dan Arnold, the preferred option, just because he's definitely the best tight end here. Although it's Jacob Hollister playing nearly 70% of the snaps last week. Probably won't go away in Dan Arnold's first game because he just got picked up, so I'm not sure he really has a full grasp of the playbook yet. So it's kind of a bit of a wait-and-see situation here. I'm not really interested in any of the tight ends, to be honest, although Jacob Hollister, 1000 bucks. I assume he's still going to be involved somewhat, although it won't be as much as it was last week. And as far as defenses go, I hate that we have to even think about them, but if you're going to play one of them, it's going to be the Bengals here versus Trevor Lawrence, who's made a lot of mistakes so far this season. It's pretty much a lock that he's going to turn the ball over a couple of times. He's going to have to hope for a pick six, which we saw last week versus the Cardinals, so it's definitely possible. Jaguars defense, no thank you. Don't really see the upside there. I know Joe Burrow hasn't like been an elite quarterback this year, but I still we have so much we have so much interest in the Bengals offense. It just doesn't make sense to want to play the Jaguars with them. And as far as kickers go, we have an interesting situation here because Josh Lambeau is going to be out for this game, but currently DraftKings does not have the backup kicker listed in the player pool. I'll look them up. I guess it's supposed to be Matthew Wright. I looked him up. He's not in there. We'll see if they add him throughout the day. I assume he'd probably be the same price, if not a little bit cheaper. But it's still kickers. You can't really project these guys. If they hit their field goals, they hit their field goals, they become decent value plays. If not, well, you're going to be left pretty disappointed because they can't run the ball, throw the ball, or score a touchdown. So you're left with a pretty low ceiling, although this could be a game where McPherson kicks four or five field goals and happens to be optimal. So you want to have some exposure to them, but I wouldn't have an overabundance of kickers because they tend to be a little bit higher owned than they should. So then just filling out our lineup, I think there's two really good ways to go with captain. I mean, you can. there's obviously more than just two ways, but I'm really liking either Joe Mixon or Tyler Boyd right now. Tyler Boyd just feels a little bit too cheap, in my opinion. 
The problem is if we play Joe Mixon, I'm probably leaving out a player that I'd like to get. We're just going to go Joe Mixon route as of right now because I feel like that's the absolute best way to go just in terms of potential ceiling because I think the in floor really because he should get over 20, 25 total touches in this game. It's a great matchup on the ground versus Jacksonville. So we'll plug him in. We'll plug in Tyler Boyd. I feel like these are kind of the, probably the best forward plays in cash games. You could swap out Trevor Lawrence for Jamar Chase if you want to. He should be high owned as well. We could go Auden Tate or Mike Thomas. We'll throw in Auden Tate right now. That leaves you 3700 bucks for the last spot. It's kind of a weird situation because that only leaves you with not really many great options. They're not playing the Jaguars defense. Josh Lambeau's not playing. If they throw in the other Jacksonville kick, kind of swap with Josh Lambeau there and use that. I wouldn't hate it. Carlos Hyde's here, but that leaves you $1,900 on the table, which doesn't seem all that great. Probably upgrade from Auden Tate to one of these options, but I'm not really sure Jacob Hollister, Jamal Agnew, or Chris Evans are much better options. I'm going to go the different route, throw in Tyler Boyd in the captain spot, and honestly, it leaves you a little bit more flexibility, and I kind of like the way the lineup looks a little bit better. $11,000 in the captain spot. Meanwhile, Joe Mixon's over 16000 bucks. Obviously, I want Joe Mixon in the flex spot there. And with 2100 bucks left, it gets a little bit more flexible. You could leave Carlos Hyde in there, which I don't love because he's not the pass catching back, and I'm assuming they're playing with the lead. And then you have CJ Uzama, you have McPherson here. There's multiple ways you can go. If you want to save a little bit of money with Trevor Lawrence, you could drop down to a guy like Jamar Chase, which leaves you over $4,000 remaining if you happen to go out and take. And it really spices some things up because then you're talking guys like Dan Arnold, the Bengals defense, which doesn't look terrible. But as you can see, there's multiple ways to go. If you don't want to go Jamar Chase, you could get a guy like Marvin Jones, DJ Shark in. If you throw Marvin Jones, it leaves you 7300 bucks for the last spot. You could get DJ Shark in there as well, which doesn't look too bad. So Boyd, Captain, Burrow, Marvin Jones, Joe Mixon, Auden Tate, DJ Shark. If you don't want to punt with Auden Tate, you can play around with it. But as you can see, guys, multiple ways to go on the slate. It's not really too restrictive in terms of the salary cap this slate. If you did find this video helpful in any way possible, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, you can official member over on Patreon. Link is down below in the description for that. Well, if you do want to sign up, wait until tomorrow. It's going to get double charged since the first is coming up. And don't forget this video was sponsored by Price Picks, just you versus the projections. And as of right now, if you do sign you over there, you can get a free money bonus up to $100 when you use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. I think that'll be pretty much it. I will stop rambling. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the final picks video.